What is up, Pyromaniacs? Pyrosthenes is here. We're back in the world of Beyond Reality, and things are going smashingly, smashingly, my friends. Um, I have literally been sitting here grinding all of this stuff up. I've got some of it coming through here. Uh, some of it is uh, being processed down here. Uh, the problem with down here is... Uh, to effectively do this, I have to double process, so I have to put some right here, then it crosses over, um, gives me this stuff, and then I take this stuff back upstairs, smelt it into nuggets, and then I put the nuggets uh, right in here. No. Well, where are the nuggets? Damn it, Bobby. I had nuggets. Where are my nuggets at? There they are. Okay. I was like, I know I had some. Um, so these turn into nuggets, which I then break into uh, ingots. Um, there's no real benefit as far as I can tell in my silly Texan math, which could be completely incorrect. Uh, from what I understand, this right here gives me a 10, which is one extra. So I end up with one nugget extra. Uh, if I were to take this and break it down, uh, I can re-grind it, which would give me this, which I could then uh, wash and would give me just normal powder. But there's the only difference is this would give me one ingot. Uh, turning this gives me one ingot and one nugget, which technically is almost a 10% increase. So it seems to me that processing it actually hurts me. So, yes, this requires a few extra steps, and it's a little tedious, and it's a little annoying, but uh, I do actually seem to end up with a slight bonus this way. Uh, over here, this just requires physical man time, which is kind of a pain in the ass, but we're working on it, and it's, it's making some progress. So... In the last couple of videos, we've been working on uh, getting all of these set up and organized. And then upstairs, we've been working on getting, uh, what is it, uh, the lava production ready. So the issue we've got now is we need a way to store all of this creosote. And then once it's stored, we're going to be feeding it into a boiler, which we're going to eventually build, uh, probably within the next couple of episodes. So right now, we need to find a place that I can drop all of this, um, well, so that we can make this giant tank. And it needs to be big. It needs to be really big, because it's going to be eight blocks high and nine blocks wide. So it's going to be eight by nine. Why it didn't go nine by nine, I have no idea. But uh, it's it's a pretty damn big tank. So we're looking at one, two, three, four. That's four. Uh, five, and then we're going to take the entire next floor, basically, almost, to, to get it all set up. So my choices are, I can put it here, and we can put our boilers here and then pump those up. Or I can put it over there. Uh, I'm choosing over here just because it makes more sense to me. Uh, to do it in this location. So we're not going to make it too big in here. We're just going to make it big enough to, to use our, for our purposes, so to speak. So um, we're going to set the entrance right here. Uh, and then I want enough room to, to move about. So we'll go with three here. And then this will be the front part of the tank. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight nine so that's nine right there that's a, a pretty decent expansion so that's nine deep and it's three by three wide that means i need to go three each side basically if my if my mathematics is right whoa that was a little quicker and then we'll just break this back this way just a bit um we'll go what one or two more we'll go one more there we go that's pretty wide open as you can see this is gonna be a pretty massive tank go uh is it one more yeah perfect okay so this is going to be the base of the tank and as you can tell it is pretty massive pretty massive so that that should be it let's see one two three four five six seven eight nine perfect oh my god one two three four five six seven eight nine sweet and as you guys can see Diameter is 9, and top is height, so it's 8. So it's going to be a 9 by 9 on the bottom, and then 8 up. So uh, let's let's go ahead and head upstairs real quick, and I'll show you guys how to make this thing. Now, this thing, thankfully, is made out of iron and not steel, as some of you guys have pointed out. I assumed it was going to be swapped over to um, needing steel just to be evil, like Greg Tech has a uh, history of being, but... Apparently I was wrong, which, you know, it isn't the first time in the series that Pyro has been wrong. Um, uh, we are running a little low on coal, but don't worry, I've got a big old supply of coal right here. 
Uh, so not really gonna be a problem. We can always run upstairs and duplicate it, uh, but we can't make any more cold coke until we drain these, which is uh, what we're gonna be trying to do here pretty damn quickly. Pretty damn quickly. All right, so first off, we're gonna make the iron tank walls. These are basically the outer side of the of the tank itself. So we need a hammer and, oh God, there it goes, a wrench and then four plates. So let's go ahead and take our hammer and we're gonna do two stacks. That's gonna give us a pretty decent amount. And we shattered our hammer. Of course we did. Let's uh, grab some wood. I think I have some sticks. Yep, we'll just do two because we're probably gonna be going through quite a few hammers for this. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and make two hammers. Uh, one, two, there we go. That gives us two hammers. Put that up there. We're gonna do another stack of 64. There we go. Wow, that shattered it right off the bat, damn. All right, so we're gonna put this here, put that there, actually they're inverted, and then we'll go like that and like that. Now let's make sure, I wanna be careful, actually, I don't wanna make this many of them. Now that I think about it, that's a little much. So we're gonna make about 32 of them, that ought to work. We'll start with that for now. So let's head back downstairs and get kind of the layout of our system. Now, you can make the tank out of any of these parts. Um, it's completely up to you what you want to make it out of, uh, but the outer edge has to be made by this. So one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. All right, and then we got to connect this right like this. Now, what I will probably do is I'm going to look up and find the cheapest method to fill this bottom and the top in. Uh, if I want to extract from here though, I have to suck it off of, I have to suck it. I have to suck it off of this right here. So we were most likely gonna put our valve right here on the front. And you can see that's what the valves look like. So we are gonna need some glass. Uh, thankfully the glass isn't too expensive. Uh, that should be pretty easy, but we are gonna need quite a few more uh, of these, of these uh, setups. So I'm gonna go ahead and skip ahead. We're gonna go ahead and finish building this real quick off camera and then we'll pick up there. I wanted to show you guys how to make the other parts real quick before I finished it. Uh, the iron tank, as you guys can see right here, is just some plates and some glass. Uh, that'll give you eight parts. You can make that by just doing six glass in a row. Uh, one of the parts though that does throw a little bit of a kink in things is the iron bars for the tanks. Now we do need the tank valves so that we can uh, insert and remove liquids. So to do this, we need iron bars, and as you can see, iron bars are a little different than what we're used to. So we need either a saw, a chainsaw, or something else, or we can use a file. We're gonna use files. Uh, so we do need, how many of them do we need? Because I don't wanna waste any more iron ingots than I need. We need six of them. So I do have a file made here. You can make a file by doing uh, certain kinds of plates and a stick. Make sure you look up those types though, because it may not be what you think. There we go, that's six break that down uh and what was it uh was it a wrench or i think it was a wrench yeah it's a wrench which is kind of odd i'm not quite sure how a wrench is going to uh, make this work but hey i'm not going to question it not going to question it all right so now i need a lever which thankfully is pretty easy to get is it cobble or just normal i always forget that it looks like it's actual cobblestone so we'll shift click that that'll give us one uh we already have sticks right here pop that out my, my sorting system is beautiful, okay? Don't, oh, God dang it. Don't judge my sorting system. What happened there is uh, I have a null, so I uh, basically destroyed the uh, the cobblestone that I picked up, which is kind of humorous, at least to me. All right, so there is our lever. We put that in the middle, uh, put these on the outside, and then we put these in the middle, and that's gonna give us eight valves. Now, I really only need eight valves. Uh, any more than that is just kind of overkill. Uh, and then the rest of it, we're gonna make uh, a pretty big portion of the rest of this tanks, um, at least until we get the outline going, because obviously the outline's the most important part. Uh, well, I mean, not necessarily the most important part, but you, you need a lot of it for the outline. So we're gonna pull, we know 32 of them was enough to do almost all of the bottom, and we're gonna have to do that up for the top. And then we're gonna go ahead and pull 16, well, let's do 32 more. That'll give us plenty to make the rest of the sides. And then the rest of it, I'm gonna make uh, with the iron tank gauge. The only reason I'm doing this is it's cheaper, I believe, than doing this method. Because the two recipes, it's either four iron, well, actually, no, it's not any cheaper. Technically, it's more expensive. Because this is four plates, 
and doesn't require glass. This is four plates and requires five glass. Now, obviously glass isn't that expensive, but there's no real reason to do it. I was worried that um, it required an extra component, but now that I've seen the recipe, we're just gonna do the rest of it as tank walls. There's no reason not to. Um, and we're gonna need an epic amount of tank walls. Now I did want the front to be clear glass so that I could kind of see into it. That's just more of a cosmetic thing for me personally. Um, like I said, it will work pretty much with any uh, setup, or at least it used to. Hopefully Greg hasn't uh, tweaked those settings because that would be kind of annoying. But anyways, I'm gonna head downstairs, get this all set up and we'll pick up once I'm done. All right, so we have the tank more or less set up. I've gone ahead and disabled uh, all of these or the outputs. Uh, I've got the wooden fluid pipes here and thankfully uh, the fluid tanks or whatever you want to call them, uh, they store even on braking. So I've got a wooden fluid pipe here, just basic redstone engine. It's what we use to fill all these up to begin with and uh, we're going to pump it into the tank. Now you can see right here the tank can hold 10 million buckets. That's a lot. That's a, that's a whole crap ton. So I'm going to go ahead and turn this on real quick. Whoops. There we go. That should kick on here shortly, I'm hoping. There we go. You can see the fluid is going. Uh, this will slowly drain over time. Uh, this will obviously pick up in speed as the uh, redstone engine heats up. Uh, let me take you guys downstairs uh, and I'll show you. I did screw up and build it a little too big. Um, right now this is a nine by eight tank, which I believe is the max. Uh, this has a really cool uh, graphical effect. You can actually see the fluid coming down through the top and, uh, and and just inserting itself into the tank, which I think is absolutely amazing. Now I'm wanting to utilize a lot of Railcraft in this, uh, this playthrough just because uh, Railcraft isn't something that a lot of people use. It is difficult to use. Uh, pipes are much easier, much, much, much easier. But pipes also don't look nearly as cool as this, uh, as this will when it's all said and done. Now eventually, uh, where the tank is right now is going to be the new ground. And basically we're gonna have the offloader right there. And then the track will run right over the top of it, drop its fluid and then go back around, pick up from all of these over here. And then it will circle back around, pick up from all of these over here and then go into the wall and up on top of here where it will deposit again. So it's gonna have to go up and down a little bit of a track. So what we need to do now is I need to build all of the uh, fluid loaders and then the fluid unloader and then the tracks. So we're gonna get started on that and see if we can't get all of that done in this video. All right, so I, I didn't wanna make one correction. Uh, this isn't 10 million buckets. It is 10,000 buckets. So you see where it says uh, one zero three six eight and then three zeros. You whack off the three zeros and that gives you 10,368 buckets of fluids. Uh, we've almost drained all this dry. And as you can see, we're at about, hmm, we're gonna be roughly 450 buckets worth of stuff, give or take, which is a lot. Uh, definitely not as much as we're going to need, but it is still a lot. Uh, I do need to go upstairs and duplicate all of this stuff and uh, start the process of refilling all of these. Now, granted, uh, I think all of them are actually already filled to the top, which you can see right here. So we actually just need to drain them. And that's the actual physical thing we need to do. So um, I could go through and yank all of those back out and rehook them up. Uh, that's something we could do. It's gonna take a lot of time though, and I'm really kind of impatient. So we're gonna just go ahead and start making it into real craft. Now you can see I've made a ton of iron plates here. Um, I've been grinding up the rest of these. We've still got some to go. Uh, we do have thankfully quite a few, um, I'm trying to remember the key. Nope, that's not it. Is it this one? Nope, what about this one? Nope, that's not it. Damn it to hell, Bobby. And that's the actual other map. I don't remember the damn map key. I'm trying to remember it. Son of a bitch, what did I set it to? Controls, where's map writer? Map writer, okay, where is the actual map mode? Open GUI map, it's the addition. It's the only key I didn't press. Okay, so all of my waypoints are way the hell down here where we did all of our mining. So we've got what? Lemonite, we've got redstone, iron, 
uh, and uh, another iron mine. So we've got a couple iron mines down here I can go and mine out if we, uh, for whatever reason, get to the point where we're running out of iron, which I have a feeling we definitely are going to be shortly. All right, so we're going to be making 16 fluid loaders. These are what are going to be taking the fluids from that thing or these things and dumping it into the fluid cart. So to get these going first off, we're going to need some fluid detector or some detector tanks right here. Um, I don't know why it says tank because it doesn't seem to be any tanks here, but that's fine. Uh, we can make 17 of them. The reason we're making 17 is 16 here and one there. Uh, then after we do that, we're going to need to make hoppers. And of course, Greg Tech can't have hoppers easy. We got to make it we got to make it complicated and as much of a pain in the ass as is humanly possible. I'll go ahead and swipe that like that and then like that. That's 12. We need a few more of those. That's 13. And then bam, 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 bam. That's 17. Perfect. Whoops. And then I fuck it up right there. Bam, bam, bam. Okay. 17. Holy crap. Put that there. And then we put our wrench on top. And that's 17 hoppers. That was a lot of metal plates right there. You can you kind of get an idea of how many freaking iron ingots and such like that is needed to really do Greg Tech at all in any way, shape, or form. All right, so now we do this like that. That's 10. That's not enough. We go up and then we go down. Let me try that again. Up and then down. That's enough for 22. I dropped it down to 18. That's more than enough. Put that up there and that down here. And this is going to be the fluid unloader. So that's what's going to go up here on the railcraft tanks. We're going to pull that out and then we're going to swap these. And that's going to give us the fluid loaders, which is the majority of what we need. So we're going to cycle all of these out. And then basically what we'll do is we'll place these like this right here. And all along, bam, bam. Whoops, that's not where I want you. Try that again. Bam, bam, bam. Now what you can't tell is, well, I guess you can tell, some of these are now filling the fluid loader with uh, with, with juice. You can see right here, it can hold 32,000, which is nice because this thing right here can hold 64,000. So it basically is a 50% capacity increase just by attaching one of these to the, uh, to the thing, which is great because we are going to need quite a bit of capacity eventually. Uh, and this will let these run for a little while longer, which will buy us a little bit more time to get our rails going. There we go. Perfect. And is this completed yet? Please tell me you're done. Son of a bitch. All right, so the problem we're running into now is a situation, I guess, of gravity feeding. So what we're going to do is this. We're going to take all of these like this, break them down, and I'm going to take that one as well. I'm going to let that keep running for the moment. We'll be breaking it here in a second. Uh, what we're going to do, you can see all of these guys have different levels of fluids in them. The nice thing about them is they are gravity fed, though. So I can go like this. You can see that? And they all drop down into the one in the bottom. So we break these, and then we do it again. And now we're ending up with one tank at the bottom with all of the fluid, and a bunch of them that are empty, which will give us the ability to reuse these for other liquids. Uh, if I didn't do this, we'd end up having a bunch of these and they'd be completely useless, except for creosote, which, you know, granted, I guess isn't all that bad, but we're not gonna be using tanks anymore for creosote. Let me pick up all the tank pieces real quick. Uh, looks like we still have a couple left, oddly enough. It's kind of weird how they all have different levels of fluids in them. That's, what, that's what's always kind of interested me is, is what, how, how that actually works in the mathematics department of, uh, of Minecraft. All right, and then we break this, that, and then this is the actual fluid tank itself. All of that for 81 extra millibuckets worth of fuel. And then we'll just slap you right on top of there. And I need to wrench you around, don't I? Yep. We'll flip you around, boom. And we're now empty, perfect. So I won't need you anymore, and I can break that, and we definitely won't need him. So at this point, what we're gonna do is we're gonna put the fluid unloader right here, and we will run a rail cart 
over the top of this guy and then it'll basically dump into here and that's that's the hopes there so with this setup uh wow you can see all of these little guys are full that's awesome so now we are going to need to build a tank cart which is right here thankfully this isn't so bad because we already have an iron tank gauge which we've used uh to make the iron tank over there we got one right there and then we just need i believe just a simple minecraft cart which of course because we're in greg tech isn't simple at all so we're gonna need three more tanks uh oh my god and a bunch of other stuff uh, we are unfortunately currently out of iron, so I'm going to have to process a bunch more iron, but that's fine. Uh, we will start on the cart process in the next video. Now, we do have a lot of rails here, so eventually, probably right off the bat, I'm going to make two to four carts just to get us rolling, and then we'll start reducing that um, as time goes by, because otherwise, uh, if we start with just one cart, it, it might never catch up. I mean, this is a lot. I don't know how many carts this thing can hold. Um, it is one tank, and it, it doesn't really say how much that tank can hold. So I'm a little curious. Uh, we did set it up in our single single test world, so I, I guess I could have looked there. But anyways, guys, uh, one more thing before we go. Uh, I will eventually also hopefully set it up on top here to where we can cycle the coal in. Or, yeah, the coal in and the coal coke out. Uh, but I'm not quite sure how to do that. I know there is a item loader, which you can see uh, right, yeah, item loader and an item unloader. So this right here will do the basically the same thing. It's going to unload items into this from the, uh, the cart and then it will take things out. The question is, um, how do I set that up? Like where on here? And is it going to take one of each? Because if that if that's the case, then I'm going to need one to load and one to unload, which kind of a pain in the ass. And then, yeah, I don't I don't really know how I'm going to do that. Because one cart might not be able to figure out the difference between, I don't know if there's a filter. If there's, it does look like there are filters. So if there's a filter, then basically I'll set it up to load coal and unload charcoal and then we'll need like four or five of those carts the, the real tricky part is going to be getting those carts to come back upstairs quite a few floors and then once we get up here they have to interact with a an inventory manager so what i may do is have them feed into maybe a barrel if i can uh, i don't know if that'll work if that can then we can feed that into the machine inventory manager and, and go from there so it'll be it'll be interesting and it's all going to be done with railcraft which is going to make it in my opinion, fairly cool because uh, nobody uses Rowcraft anymore. So hopefully, uh, hopefully that'll give this Let's Play something a little different than what you guys uh, maybe used to or what you guys have normally seen. So anyways, guys, that's going to wrap up this episode. Hopefully you guys liked it. If you did, please slap that like button. Make sure you subscribe. And I'll catch you guys in the next clip.